Uh, well, uh, Juan uh, and everyone, thank you very much for taking time out today uh, to take in this masterclass uh, discussion on how digital and ESG uh, relate to each other. And um, now by way of, of uh, personal introduction, um, my name is Jeffrey Can, and I'm an author, a professional speaker, and an instructor on the topic of digital innovation, uh, specifically in oil and gas. But of course, uh, these days that encompasses a much broader energy uh, uh, world. Now, if you are raising uh, money in capital markets today, you're going to be asked two questions. Number one, what is your commitment to ESG? And number two, how are you dealing with technology-driven change? Now, of course, these are separate questions and you're gonna need clear answers for them. But I think you should prepare to try and answer a third question, which is, how are you leveraging digital innovations to meet your ESG objectives? This is what I call the sweet spot, the overlap. But what exactly is ESG? The E stands for environmental, S stands for society, and G is for governance. The concept here is that companies will take into account these, these broader ESG dimensions in their decision making so that they consider broader criteria than just a profit motive. Environmental uh, includes the energy consumed and the waste produced and the effects that that has on all living things, plants, animals, birds, fish, our water resources, oceans, soil, land, whatever. It includes impacts that are both uh, absolute in the moment as well as cumulative. The overall balance, the ability of our natural systems to recover and repair and rejuvenate themselves. These are all factors that are taken into account in the environmental considerations. Society considerations include the relationships and the reputation of our enterprises, and that includes relationships with people, labor, indigenous communities, populations both rural and urban, the disadvantaged, and developing nations. And governance, the final, the G, is the system of practice, controls, and procedures that you use to take decisions to comply with the law and to meet the needs of regulators, capital, youth, students, and others. ESG thinking has come about because traditionally, the production and consumption decisions that enterprises, uh, nations, even individuals uh, make, typically place a priority on what I call short-term and very narrow criteria, such as getting the lowest price or maximizing the profit or hitting an earning target or satisfying a regulator and not on these broader longer stride factors. I now believe that digital innovations are one of the very few tools available to industry, including both energy producers and consumers, to lower their costs and improve their productivity and meet those ESG objectives. Capital markets are now very worried um, about activist investors and youthful money, the millennials. They know and have taken note of the rise of ESG and now they're exerting very real pressure on many industries, including energy, chemicals, resources in particular, to declare clear goals and intentions with respect to the environment, society, and governance. Without that clarity, construction projects can no longer secure insurance so that they can be built. And the production of oil and gas will simply not get funding. This brings us, of course, to the third element, digital. How capital markets, in the space of just 15 years, had fundamentally shifted their valuations to favor data-rich, asset-light, fast-iteration digital businesses. And of course, that brings us back to here, to the center, to where ESG, digital, and energy all meet, and to the question of the session. How can digital support your ESG agenda? Well, with industries facing such huge headwinds, 
Here are a handful of candidate areas for digital investment to improve your ESG position. Number one, brownfield analytics. As I mentioned, the majority of industrial infrastructure from power plants to wells to gas plants predate ESG concerns and the digital era. These assets, they're now a drag on companies' abilities to achieve much progress with an ESG agenda because they're so resistant to change. On the other hand, they can be data-rich assets because many of them are connected to controlling systems like SCADA and other monitoring technologies. Where digital can really help is by boosting the analytic possibilities based on that data through machine learning and artificial intelligence. These tools can help improve the quality of that legacy data so that you can use it to yield a better analytic outcome, as well as by just conducting better analytics in the moment. Better analytics leads to better operations decisions, which can be tied to your ESG goals. Number two, carbon tracking and tracing. Brownfield assets are gonna be carbon sources uh, for the foreseeable future because it's hard to change their fuel inputs and consumption uh, characteristics. What this means is that industry is going to have to carefully track its carbon position so that you can take the appropriate offsets. Getting to net zero means an explicit acknowledgement. You're going to be positive in some respects and negative on the other. So you need to get very, very sharp on where you're positive so that you invest appropriately to reduce your carbon position. Number three, optimization of movement. Optimization of work is hard. Imagine this, you're running a, a tank farm and the, you have hundreds of tanks. They're varying sizes and capacities. They're constantly changing customer demand of what's flowing into the tanks and what's being purchased, what's being taken out. You have real limits on pipe capacities and, and uh, pipe uh, flow rates, pumps. And, um, and then of course you have fluctuating power prices and you need power to run the pumps. Today, you may be able to optimize for rateability. But what if you wanted to manage to some other factor, such as uh, lowest carbon emissions, so that you take advantage of uh, green energy, uh, should it be available? It turns out this is a really hard problem to solve. If this optimization problem, it's now solvable with digital, and that will unlock ESG uh, performance. Number four, asset automation. In the upstream of oil and gas, uh, the, the wells are subject to the Pareto principle. Let me cast your mind back to several years you will have heard about the Pareto principle. And it says that there's an 80, it's the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of oil is produced out of 20% of the wells. But the converse is also true. 80% of the wells produce just 20% of the oil. In other words, a piddling amount. These tiny wells, and there's hundreds of thousands of them, cannot sustain the cost of a dedicated crew of petroleum engineers and highly compensated professional oil people to constantly track these and optimize these assets at, 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 uh, on, a, on a continuous basis. In addition, it turns out, if you build a a pad with more than one well on it, which is now quite customary in, in Canada, the United States, the wells are interconnected to each other somehow underground so that the decisions you might take on one well have a spillover effect on other wells in the same area. By strapping inexpensive sensors to these wells and feeding the data collected into an artificial intelligence engine, in this case, one called Kelvin, um, BP has cut its field costs in, in the fields where it's using this technology by 22%. And it's improved the productivity of those wells by a further 20%. So a 20% cost reduction and a 20% productivity boost. Mobilizing people to maintain and repair those wells incurs a carbon cost. So there's an avoidance of carbon uh, emissions. Next is supply chain transparency. In our global world now, the supply chains for many products, 
oil, gas, chemicals, food. These supply chains are now very long and they're very complex. Tracing products through the supply chain to provide the assurance that those products were sourced from an ethical uh, point with, uh, from a supplier with meaningful ESG practices who is not contributing to waste um, emissions and is disposing of the products in a safe and responsible manner uh, through, through meaningful ESG practices is fast becoming a requirement if you wish to supply global brands. This is already very pronounced in consumer goods, pharmaceuticals, food products, and it has now come to the chemicals industry. In my lifetime, I didn't think I would see this, but it is here. Finboot, who are sponsoring the webinar this morning, are a supplier of middleware blockchain technologies. And uh, this, these technologies are being used to help chemical producers track and trace their products, fluids, gases, and commodities throughout the full supply chain. And given the supply chain's high level of fragmentation, multiple handoffs, discrete services, frequent changes of control and ownership, high regulatory burden, this is a hard problem to solve. Market leaders like Stahl Chemicals are using these tools uh, to deliver the transparency that supply chain participants need so that they can continue to supply these global brands and be able to demonstrate meaningful progress on their ESG metrics. So how do you move forward? Well, I recommend taking a page from a book entitled 10 Types of Innovation. It's written by Larry Keeley. And Larry, in partnership with another uh, researcher named Jay Doblin, have been studying the world of innovation for the better part of three decades. They also tried to understand not only how innovation worked, but equally importantly, why it failed. First recommendation, organize yourself for success. Most likely your organization has set up a digital center of excellence or an innovation council, or maybe a SWAT team or a strike force in digital. You've probably set up an ESG team, or at a minimum, you will have handed some ESG responsibilities off to <clears throat> specific expertise. Big energy companies <clears throat> frequently have someone who is focused exclusively on uh, indigenous and Aboriginal people relationships. <clears throat> Why not assign a person from your ESG team to connect regularly with your digital leaders comp to compare notes, um, to explore for fresh opportunities and to highlight critical wins. Chances are very, very good that some of your digital activity is already accretive to your ESG agenda. Next is to provide adequate resourcing. Let's face it, money talks. Nothing important in enterprise happens without money. Why not set aside a portion of your ESG funding, which would you would then aim explicitly at digital solutions? Or the other, the reverse, direct a portion of your digital funding to explore specific ESG opportunities and goals. Your organization is bound to be able to figure out where the opportunity is greatest. Third, set targets and metrics. Nothing, nothing motivates change more than having a specific goal to hit. It's not an accident that Shell now directly links managers' pay to hitting ESG targets. Why not incorporate a measure, an ESG measure, into your performance system that ties ESG and digital together, such as the number of your ESG initiatives that have some sort of uh, digital component or overlay? Why not require that every manager say with a budget in excess of pick a number, $2 million to spend on improvements be required to spend some portion of that on digital ESG. And then why not create a scorecard of your ESG gains such as reduction in water usage or land footprint and then use digital tools to collect the data for the scorecard. Number four is to adapt your ways of working. Why not bring your digital team and your ESG team together for the occasional meetup? 
Train your digital team so that they at least understand explicitly what your ESG goals and objectives are in your annual ESG plan so that they can be sensitive to it. And similarly, why not expose your ESG professionals to digital innovations so that they can begin to power uh, ESG projects with digital uh, and that they can support their, their teams, their ESG teams, to propose uh, how digital uh, can amplify their efforts. You could feature your inside your company's internal communications. That's your portal or company newsletters where you reach out to all, all your employees in, in uh, broadcast uh, to discuss the field trials you're doing that accelerate your progress and highlight your wins. These four steps will serve you very, very well. So let me close here with the following observation. The next time you're asked, what is your commitment to ESG? And how are you dealing with technology-driven change? You should counter with how you are leveraging digital investments to meet your ESG objectives. You will surprise and delight your stakeholders, your investors, and talent. <laughs>